Good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Merrick, uh, Senior Transportation Planner at Ramsey County Public Works. I want to welcome you this evening to the Lake Johanna Boulevard Roadway and Trail Design Study, our second open house uh, for this project. Next slide, please. Uh, we have with us this evening uh, Greg Brown from Kimley Horn and Associates, who's our project manager that's uh, helping us uh, with this design study. Uh, other agency partners, uh, David Swearingen uh, from the City of Arden Hills, Public Works Director. Also Scott Yonke from Ramsey County Parks. Uh, I'm not sure if Connie Bernardi is with us this evening, but Connie is our active living um, director at Ramsey County. We also have Rich Strawman and Jean Jeringen from the Ramsey County Active Living with us this evening. Um, so a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing this evening. Uh, the agenda. Um, we are going to be uh, sharing feedback and questions uh, through the chat, so feel free to do that. Uh, there'll be a project overview by the Kimley Horn staff going over some goals of the project, um, also some draft conceptual design um, layouts that we have for the corridor, um, and then some intersection design considerations, uh, schedule and next steps. And then at the end of the presentation, we will go through the questions that are entered into the chat. So feel free to enter questions in um, at any time during the presentation. Um, and I guess with that, I'm going to hand it over to Greg Brown from Kimley Horn. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, as Scott said, you can ask questions throughout the presentation. Uh, this, these are the instructions here, and we'll have this back up when we're done with the presentation part of the uh, of the meeting. But if you're on the web, there should be an Ask a Question button in the lower right corner of the window, and yeah, click on that. You should be able to type in your your question. If you're on a mobile, there's a Q&A uh, icon in the upper right side and, and then basically click that. You should be able to type your question. We'll be compiling them along the way here. So once we get to that portion of the presentation, we'll just start responding to uh, the questions that we that we receive. Uh, so kind of getting into the, the meat of this, uh, the first couple slides are an overview. Uh, a little bit of a, of a reminder, I think uh, a lot of people may have been uh, participants in our fall meeting or kind of our kickoff meeting, but the project essentially uh, focuses from Conroe D on Lake Johanna Boulevard up around the west side of Lake Johanna and the north side of Lake Johanna and terminates at the intersection of Conroe D and Old Snelling Avenue. It kind of goes through Tony Schmidt Park, which is a big percentage of the corridor throughout the uh, uh, throughout the, the, the project area. So the goals of the project are really to develop concepts for a trail. It's going to link existing trail infrastructure as well as provide a, a through trail, if you will, along this um, important roadway. And we know that there's been a lot of, uh, or people use this roadway, I should say, extensively for walking and biking. Naturally, there's not a lot of uh, roads given the topography and the, the uh, location of the lakes in Arden Hills to get from A to B. So it's logical that it's necessary for that. It's also logical or desirable for people to take Lake Johanna Boulevard because of the amenities going either to Tony Schmidt Park or just looking at the lake, etc. So there's a lot of reasons that people are already using the corridor and uh, we are uh, you know, exploring a way to fit a trail in there that provides a safe and efficient and convenient way to to really facilitate that activity that's going and hopefully encourage more of that activity as, as time goes on. We also uh, want to consider vehicular movement and safety of that, that part of the corridor as well. It, it, it still will be a roadway. So uh, the study is, is not just looking at trail and, and peds and bikes, but how vehicles move through the corridor and what maybe there's can be some synergy in the trail design that uh, helps benefit vehicular movement or makes it safer. For everyone, so whether you're walking, biking, or driving, you feel uh, 
like a, it's a safe and efficient facility. Uh, the the concepts that we're going to talk about here tonight are all also keep in mind uh, or have in mind uh, the idea of minimizing impacts to private property. I'd say the good news in this corridor is generally there is um, a, a fair amount of available space so that we don't anticipate significant impacts or really any impacts to to properties beyond the property lines. Um, and we'll we'll show some exhibits along the way here to give people a better sense of that. And at the end of the day, projects need to be buildable and, and feasible. So that's always part of our uh, consideration as well when we look at planning for these types of facilities. So we we had a meeting in the fall. We had a survey that was live for several weeks uh, and we got a lot of response. So we thank everyone for the, the responses that uh, we received and the time it took you to to participate in the process, both in person and then online with the survey that we had. Uh, some interesting takeaways, you know, uh, people that use the corridor and, and there's a lot of use of the corridor, as I mentioned, you know, almost 90% walk in the corridor that responded, 60 plus percent bike, uh, a third run or jog in the corridor. And of course, a lot of people drive, 90% use it for driving, but there's a lot of other uses here as well that were represented to a lesser degree, but rolling and strollering. I would say with the with the project, the wheelchair may be notably 0%, uh, but one of the things that we would strive to, to achieve in this project is develop a facility where it feels safer to roll or push a stroller or, or use a wheelchair, for example, that really doesn't feel comfortable today. So it's not surprising these are low numbers and frankly, one of the big goals of the project is to, to create a facility where it would feel safe to, to use those uh, modes in the corridor. Another question we asked is what's most important to you with the project? And we uh, provided a number of potential answers. The, the number one response is really that safety, creating a safe and comfortable environment for biking and walking along the corridor, uh, which is, again is probably somewhat intuitive, but it's, it's also good to see that uh, response and on paper and kind of get that reinforced what what we think is is driving people. Um, a, another very high score uh, element was linking to existing trail infrastructure in nearby destinations. I mentioned the beach, the, the Tony Schmidt Park, but uh, there are a lot of regional trails that kind of come in to the area. Some come into Tony Schmidt Park. There's a trail that comes into County Road E to the west and in the healthy trail infrastructure at the eastern terminus of the project and potentially some trail extensions to the south into Roseville or to the west along County Road D in the future. So that's something that we're very cognizant of and we'll, we'll look at as we look at um, alignments. Some general feedback themes, uh, general, generally broad support for a trail, a lot of comments about vehicles at speed, uh, you know, excessive speed or felt that uh, vehicles were moving or creating a, a unsafe environment. Some vehicles uh, utilizing the shoulder to either get around cars turning left or maybe just passing for other reasons. And all that leads to an environment that's not as safe as it could be for, for walking and strollering and, uh, or just having your young kids kind of go on their own, having some independence. It's, it's really not comfortable for most parents to allow that to, to happen. Uh, a theme we heard about, again, we something we're aware of as, as designers and engineers, but there's a lot of curvature in the corridor and that that tends to um, lead to blind corners and sightline concerns. Um, so that's something that will be uh, considered as designs move forward and maybe weighing one design off of another if it could, could help mitigate some of those things. And again, uh, connections to existing trails is a theme that, that keeps uh, resonating through surveys and feedback that we've heard. So we'll now we'll kind of work our way through the corridor, moving from County kind of Road D uh, north and east towards County kind of Road E and the, the uh, other terminus of the project. So we start at a at an intersection that's relatively complicated, five-legged. It's got wide crosswalks and uh, is really not all that pedestrian friendly in many of the crossings. And we'll be looking at at potential improvements to that as well as part of the project in the concept form. But this this segment of the of the corridor is uh, delineated or characterized by a relatively straight roadway, a relatively wide roadway, existing roadway, as you can 
scene everyone probably knows um, and what we've um, organized our study around is kind of looking at each side of the roadway and, and developing um, attributes, positives and, and concerns maybe that might exist if the main trail is on uh, the east side or the west side and as we turn the corner around the lake would be kind of the north side and south side. So at each of these general locations we'll talk about the east and west and show a cross section and uh, kind of give you some of those attributes and as as we're going along you know uh, feel free to comment as I said uh, as things are maybe fresh in your mind we can come back to these slides as we get to the end of the presentation as well to talk about specific things. So this first slide is uh, showing just the east side concept. The trail would be on the east side of Lake Johanna Boulevard running along Lake Johanna Shores residences. Um, the, as I mentioned, we would look at doing some improvement to this intersection to make that a safer crossing to get to the trail. Uh, in this case, we, we would have a crossing of the trail uh, of the Lake Johanna Shores access roadway here. This typical section is a cross section of the roadway that uh, we would envision being um, constructed or how it would be modified in order to facilitate this trail. So in, in all in this section and all these sections will be looking towards the north or the east. So what you would notice here I want to bring your attention to is the existing roadway is about 44 feet wide as I mentioned is quite quite wide. This line here represents about where the east curb is of the existing road, and this line here is the existing west curb. So the concept here is that the roadway actually gets narrowed. This east curb, which is here, gets, gets pushed over to the left, and that makes room for a, a more generous trail, a 10-foot trail, and a boulevard of six foot or more to facilitate space for separation of the users of the trail and the roadway as well as uh, space for kind of practical uh, things, uh, signage and maybe lighting or uh, snow storage when the streets get plowed, the snow needs to go somewhere. So this way the snow doesn't go right onto the trail. The trail will also likely get plowed. So that gives a place for the snow to go that's not in the private property. So the, the big takeaway here is the roadway gets, gets narrower. We still maintain parking along Lake Johanna Shores. Uh, but there would be no parking on the west side. And I think that's essentially how things are, are signed today. Although there's space to park, it just isn't allowed. Uh, so we wouldn't really change the parking dynamic, but the roadway overall would get narrower to facilitate that trail. On the west side of the road, really no change at all. So for property owners on the west side, this curb stays where it is. The, the grass or the yards are virtually where they're at. On the east side, a big portion of this area is Lake Johanna Shores, but when we get to the private properties to the north, it's uh, the edge of the trail is a foot or two beyond the edge of the roadway today. So it's a very modest uh, change and still well within the, the right of way, if you will, of the county roadway. So uh, in this same segment, we looked at the west side of the roadway, explored that to see what what would that look like? Uh, so the main trail would be on the west side of Lake Johanna Boulevard. As you probably know, there's a sidewalk today on the east side, which serves uh, some parking and serves Lake Johanna Shores primarily. That sidewalk terminates about mid midway here, uh, just shy of Sand Dean. Uh, we would anticipate that that sidewalk might want to be extended up to the next crossing, either at Sand Dean or Beckman. Uh, so in this typical section, we have the main trail on the west side. Again, here's the roadway in the bottom. Similar approach where this curb on the east doesn't move. The curb on the west moves into to the right to facilitate space for a trail and a boulevard with potentially trees or, or signs, et cetera. Again, we're a couple feet or so beyond the existing roadway limit to the left here. Still uh, nine feet or, or so plus or minus to the actual property line. So the the impacts to, to have this trail are, are really very, very minimal from a property, a budding property owner perspective. And this sidewalk here as shown is really where the existing sidewalk is located. And it's it it's an option to extend it to Beckman. The extension to Beckman 
or Sandine would allow users of, or residents rather, of um, Lake Johanna Shores to walk to a safe crossing, whether it's County Road D or up to Beckman if they're headed more towards the lake, and then cross at a safe location uh, to get to the main trail on the west side. So as we move further north towards Stowe Avenue, it's really very similar dynamic. The roadway is straight, the roadway is wide. Uh, we would look at uh, the improvement in a very similar way, uh, narrowing the road if the trail goes on the east, uh, narrow, narrowing the moving the east curb over to the to the left. If the trail goes on the west, then we would move the uh, west curb over, and then you have the trail on the west side. Something to think about, and both of these is uh, you know access to the trail. So the the Lake Johanna Shores. Uh, residents and the Sandine Road area would have access on the more direct access when the trail's on the east. The neighborhoods to the west would have a little bit more direct access when the trail is on the west and, you know, needing to cross the street or vice versa, depending on which side of the road is on. And it's really something we want people to think about as we talk through the corridor, uh, pros and cons of one side or the other. We have some ideas from, say, technical or uh, connect connectivity perspective, but really want to get your your thoughts on how you would use this, and if you think it would be easier to use on one side or the other. So moving along here as we go north from Stowe towards County Road E on the west side of Lake Johanna, the character of the roadway changes, the existing roadway changes quite significantly. So we've, we've necked down from a relatively wide and straight road to a curvy and relatively narrow roadway. Uh, you can see the shoulders here are you know, very limited on, the, on both sides, east and west. There's a little bit of paving here, which uh, uh, interesting as we got into the project, this is actually installed not so much, really not as a trail or a walkway, but really to prevent uh, erosion or sloughing of the bank into the, towards the lake. Now it's, it certainly has kind of served as an informal path, but it really wasn't built with that, that in mind. And, uh, frankly, you know, obviously kind of looks, doesn't look like it was engineered well as a path, but the reason was it wasn't intended as, as a path. So as we get into this area, we really look to see, could we fit a trail in on the east and the west? And what would that look like uh, given these really narrow conditions? So first looking at the east side, and, and I would say one of the ground rules we had uh, was to generally try to keep the limits of anything we we were are exploring to the top of the existing bank. Uh, and the reason we did that is, you know, anything that might go further into the bank or outside of the bank is just going to be uh, costly for one thing. It could Im impact more trees. It's also a little more or maybe a fair amount more impactive or complicated for the private dock usage there. So we wanted to keep anything that we were doing kind of at the top of that bank near the edge of that asphalt um, zone if you will that that it's not a trail but the the paving that was done to, to promote the slope so that's this limit on the other side of the road the there's a couple things in in mind and one is the existing edge of the road and then generally there's about a six foot space that's relatively level and then that gets to uh or transitions to a relatively steep slope in many cases um uh, private landscaping that's developed walls or stairways, et cetera, that go to the homes that are generally quite a bit above the, the road grade. So when the trail is on the east side, our concept was to keep this curb line, existing curb line, pretty much where it is. We would narrow the road even further. So today it's it's probably in the neighborhood of 30 feet wide, and we would be looking at a road that's in the 22 to 24 foot wide uh, space. And that would provide just enough room to squeeze a 10-foot trail in. We would have a couple feet of clear clearance to a railing. We'd have a fence or railing on the lake side. Uh, and then we'd have just enough room to have a couple feet of clearance, what we call a maintenance strip, to the curb line um, of the traffic. So it's it's what I would say a very constrained minimalist situation. And providing that six-foot space here that we had to the south would mean either the roadway gets really close to these the private uh, steps and walls, or we have to have more of a wall that's along the lake edge and more complications relative to that. So that's the east side. 
on the west side of, of uh, this, this zone, we would envision the trail being put right to the edge of that six foot space that I talked about. And we feel like a trail, a trail uh, along that line is more conducive to uh, kind of connecting to those residential steps or, or areas. And if there's a residential boulder wall, that would be okay to be right near the edge of the trail. Uh, so we were able to use that space that we really weren't able to use uh, in a safe manner with the roadway, if you will. So that we still narrow the roadway to a minimal uh, roadway width, but in this scenario, we think we could actually uh, provide for a six foot boulevard. That boulevard would actually have a little bit of a slope to it because of the nature of the hill here in the lake. Uh, so it wouldn't be a, likely would not be a level boulevard like typical boulevard, but could be wide enough to plant trees and kind of create a similar feel uh, to the concepts to the south. So that's, that's uh, an interesting, uh, comparison between the two options here in this pinch point, but we do we do feel like you could get a trail in in either case, whether it was on the east side or the west side, and keep two way traffic. So that was an interesting thing, I guess that we've that we've uh, encountered, or as we got a little bit more into the details. So this next zone is through Tony Schmidt Park, essentially kind of from County Road E here, where you see the beginning of the the park running along uh, as the road kind of turns easterly. This image here is that crossing where the Elmer Anderson Trail comes in on the north side of, of uh, Lake Joanna Boulevard, crosses over to the park proper. So uh, in this case, we're looking at the south side or the north side. So the south side here would come along and run south of the roadway, but between the parking lot of the park and the roadway. So this cross section C, illustrates that. To the right, you have the parking lot of Tony Schmidt Park. You have the, the roadway. Here's kind of the center line of that. Again, we're back to a fairly wide roadway, about a 40 foot wide roadway. And we would uh, propose that this curb line on the south side of the roadway moves in. So in effect, there's no shoulder on the, for the eastbound lane. The shoulder would stay the same on the, on the westbound lane. And that would create enough space to, to provide for a boulevard that would have green space and, and potentially trees, have our trail, and also a little bit of separation. We have about four feet here in this concept between the parking lot and the trail because we, you know, we want to keep some, some distance there. Um, so it, it can fit in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it does allow for a boulevard here and, and some space to the parking lot. And, um, you know, access between the the beach part of the of the um, park and the trail is quite good in this scenario. Then we're looking at the north side along here, and uh, here is a cross section of that. We actually have a kind of a couple of scenarios there. So what's interesting about the north side in this area is there is a lot of real estate uh, north of the roadway, and it's you know natural area. It's part of Tony Schmidt Park. And in general, in, in much of this distance, we feel like the trail could, could uh, separate itself quite significantly from the roadway. You know, maybe uh, certainly six feet, but really more in the 10 to 20 foot range, maybe, maybe greater in some cases. And it would feel, uh, have a whole different kind of character to it. It, it could feel more like a, you were meandering through the woods, if you will. Um, you know, not, we wouldn't be too far from the roadway, but far enough to, to have a different feel of, of experience. And so that was an, is an interesting attribute, I think of this north side uh, along, the, along the park. And uh, another note to make in this area is we, would, we wouldn't change or wouldn't need to change the roadway here, uh, you know, unless there was other desires, if you will. But so from a economical point of view, I mentioned, you know, that's always in the in our mindset on these things, this would be a case where we're really just spending our money on a trail and not on a trail plus some roadway improvements. So that's that's something to consider. Uh, it's something that um, would reduce costs of the project. Uh, this is a, a north side concept in a constrained area. So there are some zones where it may not be conducive to being too separate from the roadway, but in those areas we would treat 
the uh, roadway similar how we've done it in other places where we would remove the shoulder. We would put a curb in to allow for a minimum of six feet of boulevard and um, then the, the trail facility from there. So there's kind of a this would probably be our minimum and then we could go to something wider through that area or uh, through that zone where we had space to meander. So the next zone is kind of leaving Tony Schmidt Park and, and we're moving to the east towards Seams Court. Uh, and the character of the roadway gets curvy here. The other character change that's significant is we, we change from kind of a public space, at least on both sides, to a private uh, housing residential space on the south side. Uh, still a fair amount of public land, Tony Schmidt Park on the north, uh, until we get a little bit closer to Seams and then, then we convert to residential there as well. So here you can kind of see the, the green here on the south. We flagged this, this area where the homes are as a pinch point as well. Um, an area that's uh, a challenging place to, to fit a trail. And the other thing that's a consideration here is although we have uh, right of way, and in many cases a fairly generous, this 80 feet is the, the county right of way. It's not uncommon to have uh, that much right of way in this area. That's a quite a wide county right of way in relative to the county system. More typical is 60 or 66 feet. But uh, that right away is very close to the actual houses, uh, which is different than most cases. So although there is that public space, it's really not something that we would want to utilize in the interest of people's homes and driveways and kind of changing things. So what we used as a kind of a, uh, a border, if you will, an official border for our design is where the existing roadway is. So. This line down here represents the existing 40 foot roadway. So our, our concept is assuming instead of the edge of the shoulder here, this would be a trail. So we aren't therefore really changing the relationship of the public space to the private space in this area. We're, we're, change, we're trading a, a shoulder, if you will, for a trail. And we would narrow the roadway up from 40 feet to 24 feet, give or take, and put a curb in on the side of the trail to provide some separation and uh, the the north side of the road would would stay largely uh, the way it is as well. The north edge of the road would be kind of the same as as it is today. So if the trail was on the north side here in this corridor, uh, we still have we still have a pinch point. I would say it's less uh, acute, um, but it's some similar dynamics. So. Uh, in this case, we didn't change the south side of the road. It just remains as is. We shrink the north side of the road up to eliminate that existing shoulder. We provide a, 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 uh, a boulevard and a trail. The trail could probably actually drop down a little bit from the, from the roadway to, to play off the topography that's there. And uh, we, we're still uh, quite a ways away from the home that's on the north side, a little different dynamic than the homes that are on the south side. So that, those are the, the two uh, general scenarios in the in that segment. Then our last piece here is from Seams Court to Old Snelling. And this is residential essentially on both sides. Uh, neighborhoods generally feeding into Lake Johanna by streets as opposed to fronting properties, but uh, uh, residential in character versus the kind of the county park. So looking at the trail on the east side, or sorry, south side here, We'd have a couple uh, crossings of Seams Court and Ridgewood Road, so the, these neighborhoods would have uh, direct access to the main trail. The neighborhood to the north, uh, coming off of Oak Avenue, would not have direct access. It might be something that we we would like to hear about from the residents whether a crossing would be desired here, or maybe a sidewalk up to the new intersection proposed at Snelling uh, to then get access to the main trail at that location. So what that might look like in cross section is again similar kind of similar theme to what we've been doing, taking that uh, existing roadway, which is about 36 feet in this area, narrowing it up uh, on the on the south side, putting a curb in, building a 10 foot trail, creating that minimum of six feet of boulevard. Um, the right of way, the public space is quite quite uh, generous here, if you will. So we're not really near front yards or side yards to speak of. So this this fits in quite 
quite well on the south side. Uh, the north side concept, uh, we would look at um, in a similar fashion, the neighborhoods to the south now don't have direct access to the main trail. So a question we'd like to get some feedback on is, uh, among other things, but is would there be a desire to have a, either crosswalks or a crosswalk here in one of these locations for these neighborhoods to the south to get to the trail uh, on the north? or would you know just coming up to this main intersection and crossing over there suffice then the neighborhood to the north north oak avenue would have direct access to the to the trail and this is a bit of a mirror image here but we in this case we showed a sidewalk on this on the south side we could have had a sidewalk on the north side on the other option too that's that's a, certainly a possibility just kind of curious about people's thoughts and feedback on that similar approach here we would put a curb in, narrow the roadway up. In this case, we're narrowing it on both sides to facilitate the sidewalk and uh, the trail on the, on the north. Um, but providing boulevards that would be uh, generous enough, if you will, to, um, to support trees and signage and, and the other things. So then we terminate our, our project here at Old Snelling and County Road E. This image is something that maybe people have seen through other public engagement, but this isn't part of our study per se, but we we are coordinating with other studies going on. And this represents a, a concept of the, a new intersection design at County Road E and Old Snelling and Lake Johanna Boulevard, which is a roundabout, a single lane roundabout. So uh, what's important to note, I guess, for the, for the group tonight is that uh, however this gets improved, the, the trail, whether it's on the north side or south side, or maybe we have a trail on one side and a sidewalk on the other, will be uh, coordinated with this improvement and, and uh, adjustments to this might, uh, might be in order to accommodate the preferred location of the trail on Lake Johanna Boulevard. Let's say it's, it's uh, decided to go on the north side, then I think we would maybe look at widening a, one of the sidewalks here or the paths here to represent more of a trail section, those kinds of things. So the the county, I believe, is leading uh, this study as well. The city is certainly well well um, involved in that. Uh, but the left hand and the right hand are speaking to each other, and it's something we'll be working with closely as, as both studies move forward. Uh, we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier in the in the presentation at County Road D intersection. In a similar vein, we would want to look at some improvements there. And as we, uh, once we kind of get get some some synergy on where the trail might want to be on Lake Johanna Boulevard itself, we'll look at what potential improvements could happen at this intersection to facilitate that trail coming into the intersection and, and then crossing the move to other areas, whether it's going County Road D to the west or going south into Roseville on Fairview. So uh, we'll be looking at some ideas along those lines at that intersection. Uh, another thing I'd like to bring up to people is uh, as a part of this, we'll be identifying some, some stormwater opportunity areas. So this is a preliminary study. We're really focused on the trail and trying to get some, some synergy, hopefully, on a, on a general location, preferred location. It's okay though if we haven't solved that at the end of the at the end of this particular study, but we also are acutely aware of the need to improve water quality, especially when we're we're designing trails and facilities adjacent to, you know, the pristine water, the lakes in our communities. Like Johanna is a, a natural resource that's you know um, a gem for the the city and the in the region. I grew up on Columbia Heights and I used to bike to. Tony Schmidt Park to swim there. So, I mean, it's it was our favorite lake to go to. Uh, we biked, I don't know, a half hour or what it was, but, you know, it was worth the, worth the ride. And so, you know, these days, back in the day, there wasn't always as much attention to the water quality side of things on public infrastructure. That certainly has changed. And one of the things that a project like this could bring with it, it could be uh, it, the addition of uh, facilities that could, help deal with not just the trail water, but water from the roadway. You've seen in many of our concepts uh, that we've introduced curbs and gutters into the roadway, which generally don't exist today. So that allows us to collect water, organize it a little bit and treat it 
um, through ponds like this, this image here or other structures that might be underground, depending on the space that we have available. But at the end of the day, our goal is to have the water that enters Lake Johanna in this case, cleaner than it is today. So it's something that we're, we're considering in, in the concept design. And as we move forward and, and uh, hopefully coalesce around kind of a, a location or general location for the trail, we'll also be looking at opportunities to uh, place water quality features and we can identify that and, and exhibits as we go forward uh, with the project. One of the things I would I would note relative to that uh, trail alignments where they can meander and maybe not always be six feet, for example, if we have space to go 10 or 12 or 14 feet, that tends to uh, work very well with opportunities with water uh, to provide water quality features. So uh, it also, you know, not only creates a nicer experience, maybe a little more varied experience where you're not just following the roadway lockstep the whole way, but you're you're meandering a little bit without being uh, too out of the way as a bicycle bicyclist. But uh, where those meanders happen, there would be natural locations to introduce something like this and and kind of create a, an area of interest as well for the the walker or biker that's moving along. But we talked a little bit about schedule in the fall. And uh, nothing really has, has changed along those lines, but we're now in the in the winter of 2022. Hopefully, we're at the, <laughs> at the tail end of winter, um, and we're we're sharing some of our, our initial concepts. We wanted to explore essentially the two sides of the road and and kind of flesh out uh, pros and cons of those two sides to get people to to think about and weigh in on. Um, Based on the feedback we we get from you tonight and a survey that's that's live, I believe tonight or will be live in the morning if it isn't right now. Uh, and that survey will be open for a while, very similar to the past survey, although it's going to have all these graphics and notes uh, on on the mapping that you'll be able to kind of access and kind of look at and maybe uh, contemplate for a little longer than you can here tonight as I as I work my way through these, but we'll get feedback from you relative to our meeting tonight and that survey uh, and coalesce that into a refined concept or concepts if there are still you know, alternatives and locations, flesh out a little bit more detail on uh, where sidewalks might wanna be, if at all, uh, partner sidewalks, if you will, or water quality areas, meandering of the trail itself, the limits of roadway work where roadway changes need to happen, those kinds of things. Then we'll come back to to the uh, community here and have another discussion on that, and then kind of button things up as a part of this particular study. The next the next uh, step, if you will, will be looking for some funding or programming the improvements into the actual capital improvements schedule of uh, Ramsey County. And Scott, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but that would be something that would be kind of next up, next to bat, if you will, after the uh, this part of the study is, is buttoned up in uh, early summer of 2022. Right. Um, yeah, for those of you that were not at the public meeting in the fall, just as a reminder, uh, this is a planning study. Um, the county does not have any, or the city both do not have any funds committed to constructing a trail at this point in time. So uh, we're kind of going through a brainstorming process of what might be feasible on the north side of the road and the south side of the road and looking at some design concepts as Greg has explained to you. Um, after the study is completed, we'll have a final report that will be um, published, you know, that will be made available and then down the road we will coordinate with the city and look for opportunities for funding. But at this point in time, there is no timeline for construction. So we're we're getting to the uh, we're kind of at the at the tail end of our formal presentation. I know there is uh, some questions have come in. I'll get to those here in a minute. Some some things to think about for feedback that we'd like to get, but we're open to whatever you might have. Uh, the uh, Primary things we we're curious about is, do you have strong preferences for one side of the road or the other? Uh, 
you know, any crossing areas, any intersections we talked about, the east end at County Road E and the south end at County Road D, we know those need some attention to improve safety, but um, do people think essentially kind of every intersection along the way sees that, or are there some that are more dangerous or more need more attention maybe than others? And, and or any other focus of, of concern that you'd like to send to the design team. So um, I think uh, we'll just revisit the, the, the Q&A instructions again on the web. There should be a, lower, a button in the lower right. On the mobile, it should be the upper right side of the screen. I think Emma or Layla, correct me if I'm wrong, if people were can they chat in the meeting as well? And they can, we can see those and we can move that to our formal questions or is that not an option? And okay, Greg, so, think maybe oh. before we get into the questions, I think we have Commissioner Nicole Fretham uh, has been able to join us and I was just wanting to give the commissioner a minute if she wanted to uh, address the group. Excellent, yes, thank you. Thank you, I, I'm excited to be here and I'm really excited about this project, mostly to hear the feedback from folks. I know this is an area that the community would really like to be able to safely walk in. There are a lot of concerns in the area and hopefully um, moving forward that there's going to be some consensus around some of these idea, uh, design ideas that to see if they would work for our community. We know that this isn't the only thing that needs to be done to make it safe, but this is a really important step in this process. So just grateful uh, for all the work that's been done so far. Grateful for the folks who are here asking questions and uh, will hopefully provide feedback and reach out to their neighbors and let them know that they can provide feedback on these designs so that we can move forward with something that the whole community really likes. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So with, with that, I'll leave the Q&A up, I think, or Emma, we'll leave that up on the screen and I'll I'll just kind of uh, get into some of the questions. So the, the first question uh, asked about how we envision walkers and runners maybe continuing to use the shoulders. Uh, specifically, you know, if, if so, how could that be safe or be made safe? Um, should arrows or marking the other markings be placed? So, I would I would say uh, my response to that is generally you know the the primary push for the project is to create a safe place for people to walk and ride outside of the roadway off the roadway and with that said some bikers especially you know uh, experienced bikers will stay on the road and that and that's certainly that's legal it's that's fine we can look at um, you know in any of these in any of these uh, concepts considering that in the uh, as as far as how lanes might be delineated and if there's any shoulder left, like maybe there's a minimum four or five foot, that's that's something that could be considered for on-street bikers that might still want to uh, use the corridor that way. It's a good point. I would say walkers, uh, I think our our suggestion or encouragement would be to not use the roadway. That's why we're, we build the trail. With that said, we understand we're talking about one side or the other. So one of the things you've seen along the way here is there's certain areas we've We've identified that we think a sidewalk, a, a companion sidewalk is probably appropriate on the other side of the roadway because of a high demand of pedestrians like, like Joanna Shores or neighborhoods, et cetera. I'd like to hear if people think, you know, other areas that maybe uh, a sidewalk makes sense so you can get to a place to cross to get to the main trail. So that that's how I would, uh, envision a safe walking environment if you're not on the side of the road of the trail or you know you if if uh you just walk on the grass whatever it's a short distance so i i think there could be some some consideration for on-street bikers for the more qualified or skilled bikers i think we would envision children and uh you know less skilled bikers to use the trail that's really you know a primary motivation for this for the trail and it being separated from the road. The second question uh, has to do with the intersection of Lake Johanna Boulevard and Conroe D and and you know what is what could that be? I think seeing the 
where the east end of the project is going with the roundabout, is that where Lake Johanna and Camaro D would go? My answer to that would be it's not necessarily, but it could be an, an option. I think uh, the county and the uh, and the city will be working together to look at what options are feasible there. I think a roundabout is something that might be uh, considered or I would presume we would look at and every intersection is different. So there's a little different dynamic going on at, at County Road D that makes it complicated for whatever type of intersection, frankly, is, is envisioned. But uh, we'll do a little bit of look-see into that in this study, and that will likely uh, you know, get further development. And we'll, we'll look lean heavily uh, on input from the city and, and yourselves here tonight. So that's something I, I think would be good to hear from people what, what you might have have to say if it wasn't a roundabout there's things we can do just with typical intersections that narrow the lanes up uh, so the crossing distances are much shorter that creates a safer environment too and that you probably see that happening more and more around town and in your travels and you go to different cities that's that's a very common strategy relatively uh, economical to to uh, apply and it's something we look at as well in this intersection uh, a question about the trail size um, and, you know, where there's tight spaces like uh, adjacent to the lake, is a 10 foot path uh, critical? Could that be eight or something or as narrow as six? And I, I would say, um, you know, although uh, in an extremely constrained area, we, we might have to look at something narrower than 10. On the other hand, um, for the amount of use that we envision here in, in the mixed use in the two directionals 10 foot width is really kind of a, a relatively uh, floor uh, width if you will from a design perspective it doesn't take much to have a couple of week people walking side by side and someone coming the other direction to really need that space uh, so i think we would tr do whatever we could to achieve a 10 foot trail uh, knowing that uh, you know, if if something was really critical uh, that it just wasn't allowable, we we would might be forced into something else. What I would say from our our work to date is we feel like we can get a 10 foot trail, and even in that most constrained area, both by the lake and then further to the east, um, with uh, you know meeting other kind of minimum criteria with the roadway. So uh, that's a bit of a surprise, frankly. I wasn't sure that that was possible till we till we dug into things a little bit uh, closely. Clearly the east side, when we're close to the trails, is more constrained in the west, but they both are able to get a 10 foot trail and um, fits in there. So that would be our our, our goal, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if something really were to, to constrain us, we, we could consider something less. Probably would not consider anything less than eight feet, but, uh, and there might be places we might uh, you know, 12 is more appropriate too, but we've been using 10 as a general baseline for trail width. Uh, the the next question um, has to do with truck use on the roadway. It it uh, the question is due to the proposed road narrowing to 24 feet, which is in some cases after and this is the pinch point after Stowe, would large trucks be allowed to use? The boulevard. Uh, and this is a county road. It's a through through road. I think um, I'll let Scott kind of piggyback on this, but generally uh, we would not preclude trucks from using a road like this. With that said, uh, I wouldn't envision a whole lot of demand for truck traffic. And you know, if anything, the the ideas that we're talking about narrowing the road uh, will tend to have a uh, in, uh, you know calming or or an influence to maybe shed truck traffic that does occur there today just because it's a little tighter squeeze. Um, Scott, I don't know if you want to say anything more about the kind of the jurisdictional issues. Sure. Related to that. Yeah, thanks, Greg. So um, yeah, Lake Johanna Boulevard, um, most people maybe don't know this, but it's actually County State Aid Highway 149. And so what that means uh, as a County State Aid Highway, it does receive um, state gas tax dollars. Um, so the county would not prohibit um, any kind of 
truck use um, on any county road and in particular a county state aid highway because there's an expectation with state gas tax dollars being used that the people that pay the gas tax um, have the ability to use um, those roadways. Is a comment or a question about traffic speed. Um, so I would say one thing I didn't really mention in our in our design or the concepts that we looked at, but you probably noticed it was a little bit of a, a pattern there. And generally, the roadway was getting narrower uh, through the, through the duration. In some cases, quite narrow, down to 22 or 24 feet, depending on where things might land in the in the final design. But and that that in and of itself has a calming influence on speed. Um, the other thing that we didn't really talk about, but I would say at intersection crossings, we we circled intersections and said these are areas we want to focus on safety for pedestrian crossing. And what we would most likely, the, the strategies we'd most likely utilize there, which I mentioned at County Road D, could be a further narrowing of the road to have an app, kind of an absolute minimum throat width of of two traffic lanes. So even though there may be parking or a shoulder upstream or downstream from an intersection, most at an at a intersection itself, the curb or the edge of the road would be narrowed so the traffic would be down to 24 or 22 feet. That does a couple things. It, it provides a visual uh, constriction for drivers, which has a kind of a natural uh, reduction in speed because you've just got objects you have to worry about. There could be signs and trees in that space or people. It also improves the sight distance for someone waiting across. So today, if you're waiting across, there could be parked cars or there could be a shoulder that's kind of impeding the line of sight from the driver to you because you're you're you know eight feet or so away from the driving lane. When we bring those curbs out of the edge of the walk to the edge of the road, you're right really in the line of the sight of the driver. So that makes that crossing movement safer, even in regardless of whether there's a stop sign or other control or not, you're, you're in the driver's eye. So those types of improvements will also have a, a calming influence on traffic. Um, it is a county road, so the, the speed today is 30 miles an hour. Uh, the county is, is really not at liberty to, to make a, a change to that, to reduce it to 25 or 20. You've probably seen Minneapolis and St. Paul have been changing speed limits. There's been new legislation passed to allow that to happen. That does not apply to county entities. Um, the only way speeds would change is by doing a study. And those studies uh, are going to based on actual driver behavior. So we wouldn't want to even do a study till this till the project improvements were done and hopefully speeds were less. Uh, because if the speeds don't change, that that study is not really going to help help that cause, if you will. So there's a that unusual dynamic that doesn't apply to local city streets that applies to Lake Johanna Boulevard relative to the regulatory speed. So our best strategy, frankly, are doing physical things like curbs and and uh, visual cues that that help uh, slow people down. So we've heard that loud and clear. It's in our consciousness for sure in design. It's something that we we would uh, advocate in the in the in a final study. Uh, so we'll be looking at that closely and, and highlighting things that would impact speed. There are a few comments or questions uh, related to trail connections. And I mentioned that's a really important part of this. I, I failed to note as we went along the way that when we get to County Road E, uh, among other places, but when we get to County Road E at that northwest corner of Lake Johanna, we know that the, I believe it's the Elmer Anderson Trail that comes diagonally from Cleveland and D over to E, and then there's kind of a gap today. We've identified that as an, an area that we would um, make a connection to or advocate a connection to. On our exhibits, and you'll see this when you look at the map, you'll see some dash lines that make that, that connection. We'll also be looking at uh, how that connects to the trail. If, it, if, the, if our trail's on the east side of Lake Johanna Boulevard, then we'll want to make sure that intersection is very safe for the users of the Elmer Anderson Trail to come along to E. So connections to trails uh, throughout the city are paramount in, in all, all of these. And I would say even in neighborhoods uh, that are trying to reach the trail. So you may not have a formal trail down Seams Court or Ridgewood, but we know people are walking down those to get to this trail. So we, we want to make sure it's going to be safe for you if you have to cross Lake Johanna Boulevard, or maybe that's a reason to have you know, a sidewalk on your side of the 
street and to get to a safe crossing at a, at a logical place. So absolutely uh, cognizant of trail connections and, and we'll highlight those. I think you'll see that as you look at the exhibits uh, online and to kind of go through things a little quickly tonight to get through all the material because there is a lot of material, but it's something in our consciousness. Um, there, there is a question, which is a good question about switching from one side to the other. You know, I, I mentioned we looked at this on an east side and a west side and a north and south. Uh, could there be a scenario where it run, the main trail runs on the east and it flips to the north? And I'd say the short answer is yes. But um, I would I would also say to the extent possible, we really want to shy away from introducing large amounts of of uh, pedestrians or bikers crossing a roadway like Lake Johanna Boulevard, but that that might be the the uh, the best route. And and where if that is the case, then at that crossing point, we would just look at ways to make that as safe as possible for crossing. And all those tools I mentioned, maybe there's even some flashing lights uh, or you know something uh, pet pet activated lights. I don't envision as signals of any. Uh, shape or form, so to speak, for like a proper intersection signal, but it could be possible. I don't think we would want to do that more than once, maybe in this corridor. But we're, I would uh, like, and I think the design team, Scott, would would encourage comments to that effect. If there's a strong sentiment, you know, uh, south south half on one side and the east half on the other side, I, it's something we'd look at, and that's that's really part of the feedback we want to hear tonight. Um, let's see here, uh, there was a uh, a comment, which is a good comment about, um, I think the, the nature of the wetland, I believe it, it referred to section C, which I, I believe is kind of the area we said, maybe we would go further away from the, from the road, or we have the opportunity to do that. Uh, it's true that some of that that land, you know, ultimately becomes a wetland. So that would be something we would be looking at. Um, as design goes forward, I, I think that would be a major uh, consideration. There could be elements where a little bit of the trail is on boardwalk. If there was a, des a desire to do that for, say, an interest purpose, uh, or we would just kind of flirt with the edge of the of the wetland. It's something that in general we I would say we really don't have an interest in filling wetlands or moving wetlands around. Uh, that's uh, used to be done back in the day, not really done anymore, but I think we can kind of run along that edge or maybe we uh, incorporate a boardwalk. I'd be curious if people think that's an interesting thing or if you know we'd rather not get into something like that. But it's it's something we we'll, we would manage and we would try to uh, Come up with an alignment that's interesting, maybe stays away from the road, but doesn't cause uh, impacts or adverse impacts to the wetland complex. Um, let's see here. Uh, there's a question about funding. I'll I'll tee this up for Scott. It says how many other studies are currently in place that would be competing for possible county funding? If so, you know what are these projects and how this, how might this kind of compare or or compete? Um, sure. So Ramsey County, um, we do currently have two other planning studies underway that are similar to the Lake Johanna Boulevard study. Um, one along Vadness Boulevard on the south side of Vadness Lake, essentially from uh, Rice Street over to uh, Kohler Road, and then also uh, Victoria Street. Um, in uh, Roseville and um, Shoreview. Um, there's also a trail study going on there. So um, those two studies, as well as the Lake Johanna Boulevard studies are currently unfunded uh, in the same situation uh, as the Lake Johanna Boulevard project. Um, the county does also, uh, when we go through the process of re reconstructing a roadway. Um, we do sometimes, uh, if there's enough right away available and there's a need, we do look at um, if there's an ability to, to do so to construct a sidewalk or separated trail as part of a full reconstruction project, uh, similar to what we're doing right now on 
planning for Ray Street north of the Capitol area would be one example of that. Um, but you know those projects um, don't come along very often and they're part of a capital improvement program, a five year capital improvement program or or transportation and improvement program that the county uh, puts together, the public works department puts together and is uh, adopted by the county board every five years. I've got another question I'll, I'll key up for Scott. I I think we had some of this um, in our field or on-site meeting in the fall, but there was some, you know, relative to speeding, there's there's a request about any, is there any ability for the county or I'm not sure if Ramsey County provides police protection, uh, but to, you know, to implement some speed control, maybe that's speed signs or enforcement to help help with that issue. We we know it's been an issue and continues to be an issue, but maybe there's been things done. That, can you speak at all to that, Scott, or is it something we would pass along? Um, yeah, so I can't really speak directly to. Um, I guess I would have to um, check with our sheriff's department um, as far as what they're. Uh, you know what they've been doing relative to uh, speed control along Lake Johanna Boulevard. I'm sure it's part of their normal uh, practice, you know, to uh, you know coordinate with the city um, in enforcing speed along, you know, Lake Johanna Boulevard and all in all county roads. Um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, um, the county uh, is uh, required to follow state law in posting speed limits along county roads and that's uh, set by MnDOT speed studies that are conducted uh, and the speed is set at the 85th percentile of the actual speeds that are driven um, along Lake Johanna Boulevard and out in other county roads. There's a couple of questions related to um, I think it's generally the segment from Stowe to County Road E on considering one way <clears throat> or converting that to one way to make more space. I would I would say uh, so one of the things we and we heard those comments in the fall. So one of the things we are trying to do here is, is to explore. Can we get a trail and a two way roadway to fit, you know, whether it's the east side or west side? So what you see tonight is we the answer to that is yes. Now, a trail on the east side is more constrained than a trail on the west in that in the scenario as we're currently envisioning it. But uh, we are able to you know, achieve the goals of a, a 10 foot trail and a two way roadway in that segment. Now with with that said, I think if uh, it's very uh, challenging if that were to become a one way, you always need to have a, a companion uh, segment and there's there are some options here, but it's it's not necessarily as uh, convenient as you know some locations around town or around the region. Uh, I think, and uh, maybe uh, Scott can can back me or piggyback on this. But if the city of Arden Hills felt very strongly about it, it might be something to be considered. But it, another element that that changing to one way brings into this whole equation is ownership of the of the facility. So it's a county roadway today generally almost universally maybe the county doesn't have a one-way road unless there's a companion road next to it that you know goes the opposite direction so that's another big challenge with with the one-way concept if we weren't able to get a 10-foot trail in uh and a two-way road I, I feel like there would be more impetus to that um uh, clearly you'd have more green space if it was one way than what we drew but uh it does appear to you know be feasible, at least in this very early stage of planning. Scott, uh, anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I think just. Uh, I think the short answer to that question is that the county really is not um, interested at this time or pursuing any kind of one way concept along Lake Johanna Boulevard, and we're not really considering that as part of this project at this time. It's a question about um, have we considered a design and have walkways on both both sides of the road and and uh, I would 
I would say it, I mentioned along the way we have some spots that we flagged in our in our initial planning or look see that looked like they would make some sense to have a sidewalk on the opposite side of the main trail because of things that are going on on the opposite side that would feed people to safe crossings. If there's other areas uh, or some people think they would like that continuous, I think there was a question or comment about could that happen along the, the pinch point along the lake from Stowe to County Road E. I would say in that area, it's really it, based on what we've seen now with the space that we have, the answer is really no, uh, unless we were to significantly change that shoreline or the that slope or uh, el eliminate shoulders or, or boulevards on both sides. And it would kind of create an undesirable situation really for everyone, for vehicles, beds, bikes, the whole work. So I don't think it's feasible based on what we've seen in that choke point or pinch point from Stowe to E uh, to have a trail or walkway on both sides of the corridor. In most of the rest of the corridor, it probably could happen. Uh, there's places it maybe makes sense. Some of those we flagged, maybe there's others that people would like to see and it might depend too on where the main trail goes. I, my last point I'd probably make on that is I think our intent is to have one main 10 foot facility, not, not two. So if there was uh, a need for pedestrians on the other side, it would probably be a five or six foot walk feeding to safe crossing areas. So I we're open to that. I think it's something we'd like to get people's comments on on the map. And maybe there's areas that we hadn't quite envisioned that make sense to to consider that a parallel trail, a parallel walk um, to give that experience or, or create additional safety. There's a question about timetable, uh, you know, like they would like the project yesterday, of course, and I think we don't I think that sentiment shared by by ourselves as well, the design team. I would have liked it 50 years ago when I was when I was biking to the beach. But um, as Scott, I think Scott kind of outlined that you know, will the county will be looking for opportunities to fund it. There's just nothing right on the radar as we as we speak. But um, yeah, I think we all believe that it, it would be a critical and well used corridor. So that bodes well for. For finding money, uh, that's one of the you know things that funding entities look for is how how well the public supports it, how many people might use it, what things are along the way. So Lake Joanna Boulevard scores very well, I'd say, on, on all those fronts. Um, uh, uh, another question about links to Roseville. I, I mentioned yes, we we're aware that Roseville you know, already has a trail on Fairview about half mile south of here that terminates and. There's been discussions with the city of Roseville and in anticipation that there would be a link programmed uh, along Fairview to connect from Johanna Boulevard down to that existing existing trail. So that's in the calculus of what we're looking at now. And we've identified that or noted that on our exhibits. It'll be kind of part of the study narrative when we're, when everything is done here at this phase of the work. Uh, question about parking. I think specifically the parking on Lake Johanna Boulevard by the boat launch. Um, so if you kind of remember back to the to the options there on in that part of the, the project, if the trail runs along the south side of Lake Johanna Boulevard, we were envisioning that the, the shoulder, which is maybe being used for parking today, uh, would would go away to make space for the trail and a boulevard. If the trail was on the north side in that part of the corridor, then either no changes to the roadway would occur. So Whatever's happening today, park, be it parking or whatever is going on, could continue to go on. Um, so I, I think, and and part of uh, the decision on that is is another bit of input. I think we'd like to hear where in this corridor is parking demand uh, needed. And may that that could certainly be one area. We know uh, Lake Johanna Shores has a parking need. It's can routinely used, consistently used along that east side along their property uh, seems a little bit sporadic to the north of that. Maybe there, you know, maybe that demand isn't as great or maybe one side could have parking and that's that's adequate. So any comments people have on parking will, will be well received and we can kind of throw that into the mix. Um, parking is always a very local local thing, so we'd like to hear uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, 
The comment about water runoff I, I mentioned as a part of the study, we'd be identifying opportunity areas to improve uh, not just runoff from the from the trail itself, but Im improve runoff that's generated by the roadway uh, before it gets into Lake Johanna Boulevard. So that's that's something that a project like this brings to the table that you know may not otherwise uh, be feasible or or just have funding. So that's absolutely going to be in the in the priority list of of design, and we'll identify some of those locations as we get to a kind of a summary report here for this project. Here, um, let's toggle down. Uh, is there any consideration of a stop sign at Stowe? I guess um, I, I, I'd say we haven't explored that. With that said, um, and, and this might be something for. Um, Scott uh, weigh in on. I think if if there's a lot of interest in that, it could be something that's considered. I'm not sure. You know, stop signs might might be something that's if it's locally uh, desired by the city, the county considered. There is a quite a distance between D and Stowe, so um, we'll you know we could throw that into the hopper. I'm curious how many people might be supportive of that. I don't know if there's any history on a request for that or not, but um, uh, something we could throw into the into the mix for discussion at county levels and city levels. Yeah, I don't know that we have uh, had had any discussions about that, but it's something we can definitely make a note of. There's a question about uh, whether this will be available. The presentation be available? Yes, uh, it will be posted on the on the website. I think we'll we'll also. Provide a synopsis of questions. I think similar to what we did in the fall. And in addition to that, I mentioned the the surveys online, which is geographical in nature. And the the cross sections I showed you, and the other exhibits I showed you, walk through tonight, will be placed along that map. So you can click on Country Road D to Sandine, for example, and you'll get the sections that we drew up that relate to that area. And that will help you maybe provide some feedback specific to those sections, and you know work your way along. So that's all going to be available uh, to people following the meeting. I think it's a couple of questions about speed, which we spoke spoke about. Um, there's there's a comment about some some of the sight lines, and I I spoke a little bit about this early on. And you know, would could the project improve a sight line, blind corners, take a curve that's a little make it a little less curvy road wise? Um, I think. That's that's possible in some cases. Uh, we'd like to get your your feedback on that. I think the comment that I'm reading here might be more towards the east end. If I'm if I'm tracking right, kind of up approaching uh, Old Snelling Avenue, and there there is some space uh, in right away that could be considered. You know, part of the dynamic at, at play here is um, you know what might be necessary for a trail versus the road. There's also some synergy, so we don't want to just do a trail design in a vacuum and a road design in a vacuum, just like we'd be looking at safety and crosswalks. Uh, for example, if we want to put a crosswalk at seams to get to the other side of the road, we might look at adjusting a curvature in Lake Johanna Boulevard to make that a safer, more visible crosswalk. So good comment. I would encourage, you know, I think we we have a sense for where blind corners are, but encourage people to flag those for us and we'll we can speak to them in the in the recommendations in the final report. Um, maybe the last comment here I'll speak to. I think we're near the end, and if we haven't if I haven't spoken to your comment, we will still uh, tabulate it and respond to it in the in the notes, if you will. So don't feel like you won't be heard if you didn't. Didn't get a verbal response here tonight. But the comment um, has to do with where will the, where is all the snow going to go? And it's good a good comment. And one of the reasons that we advocate to have some space between the edge of the roadway and the trail. And generally, you saw on our notes a six foot minimum boulevard. A lot that that does a lot of things for the for the trail and the roadway, frankly. So 
maybe first and foremost, it gives a, a safe separation of the trail users in the roadway. You just feel more comfortable with small children or strollers or or just as a pedestrian on a, on a stroll on a beautiful you know, summer day to have a little separation and green space between you and the traffic. But it, it does a number of practical things as well. Uh, roadways need signage and they need lights and they need uh, uh, space for snow, the, you know, the, the, the question here. So that six foot or, or whatever space that is, ideally the you know, six would be the minimum, provides space for snow. It allows space for speed limit signs or other signage that can be placed so they don't impede the trail users. So the sign sits in the middle there. It allows us room to plant trees and kind of change the character, improve the character of the corridor by introducing some more greenery. Uh, and ideally, the, in order to have you know vibrant uh, urban canopy, six foot or, you know, or wider is really desired. So a lot of reasons for that boulevard, not just the, the safety, but snow is one of them. And, and mailboxes, you know, all kinds of things kind of go on in that space that uh, without it become real problematic and are not only obstacles to the trail users, but kind of uh, problems for the roadway users. So with, with that, I think we'll kind of button things up unless Scott, uh, if you had any other comments you wanted to. Yeah, add. I just want to, you know, thank everybody for coming here tonight. It's a great turnout and great interest in this project. Um, we would like to keep going longer, but it is getting a little bit late in the, into the evening. So we would uh, definitely invite you to, if you didn't get your question answered, uh, we will respond to it as Greg said in the meeting notes, or if you didn't have a chance to ask a question that you would like to ask, please send me an email um, to scott.merrick at co.ramsey.mn.us. Um, and I believe my email is also on the project website. If you just Google Lake Johanna Boulevard Trail Study, it should take you to the project website with other opportunities to provide your input. Um, and I believe, uh, uh, we are having one more public meeting. Is that correct, Greg? Yes, or what I, it's yeah. Uh, yes, I think our spring. Right. Our intent would be to, uh, based on what we hear tonight and the survey feedback, to see what uh, refine these, get a little bit more of actually a layout. You've seen kind of fat lines on a map tonight. We would we would actually try to draw uh, the path, and if it's going to meander, we would meander. It. So you'd you'd see those kinds of things at a little bit more level of detail, maybe some more refinement to the cross section. So yes, uh, that's a, that's kind of the vision for the third meeting and maybe talk a little bit about more about the next steps at that point. Has any you know thing changed in the funding horizon or, or whatever the case may be? So yes, I would envision that hopefully late spring, early summer, one two. Yeah, and we uh, with COVID now winding down, uh, it looks like there would be a pretty good possibility that we would have that meeting in person. Um, the county board uh, lifted our mask mandate today for county staff and uh, things seem to be trending in the right direction with COVID. So um, unless there's some kind of downturn to that that happens, uh, um, we would definitely uh, endeavor to try to have the the next meeting uh, in person. But yeah, thanks again for everybody for coming tonight and thanks for your interest in this project. And we look forward to continuing to coordinate with you on this uh, moving forward. That will, I guess that will end our meeting this evening. Thank you.